tuned in to the Community Cats Podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats Podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I've been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. And today we are speaking with Janice Corey Cobb, a lifelong cat mom. Uh, when Janice left her native New Jersey to pursue graduate studies at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, her number one priority had been to ensure the continued care and safety of her cat, Fally B. Or Fally, is it Fally B or Fally B, Janice? Fally B. Fally B. Okay. <laughs> Rafalden Bunzel, which is Anglo-Saxon. For some crazy reason, I wanted to give her an Anglo-Saxon name. <laughs> Don't ask me why. It just kind of popped into my head. Okay, great. Fally B, even if for some reason she were never to come home. To this end, Janice had placed notes inside all of her books, her backpack, and day planner in hopes to notify whomever uh, should see them that were she to be found incapacitated, to contact her trusted veterinarian whose contact information had also been provided. Now, as perhaps never before, pet parents having adopted pandemic pets are now faced with the haunting dilemma. What if I were never to come home? Who would take care of my pets? Worn by the pet parents rather than by the pets themselves, my Save My Pet ID tag made right here in the United States of stainless steel is available in the original necklace, the keychain, and also in the bracelet version providing the comfort and reassurance that beloved pets will be cared for even if they were never to return home. In the front of the paw-shaped amulet is the type and number of pets, and in the back, the information for a trusted emergency contact. What could be better? In her current capacity, as a highly mobile adjunct professor, this surety of immense comfort. Visit the Zinzi Pie website, savemypetidtag.com, to get yours today. To complement her busy adjunct teaching schedule, Janet volunteers with three local no-kill shelters, contributes to various animal benefit organizations, notably to Best Friends and also to the ASPCA. Janice, who shares her life with her four beloved cats and also trains at Club CKO. Janice is also a big supporter of the online kitten conference that we had in June this year. So Janice, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Thank you, Stacey. I'm honored to be here. First and foremost, I'm going to ask you, you have four lovely cats, but how did you become so passionate about cats? I always wanted a cat. I was born wanting a cat. And when my parents took us on a family vacation to an Amish farm called Robin Run Farm, when I was about three years old, I saw old Tom, big, big, big scruffy tabby. I think he had one ear chewed off. And I was told, don't touch old Tom, he'll scratch your eyes out. Well, Tom and I had an understanding right away. I went over to old Tom and I picked him up. And I was only three and Tom was big, so I had to drag him. And he turned into this boneless cat. I put him on my lap, on my whole body, on the hammock. And he began to kiss me and purr and make biscuits and drool. And at that point, I knew there was nothing else that I wanted more in life than that. I knew this to me was heaven. Wonderful. And I guess you have a theme of larger kitties because I know yes. that the kitties that you have at your house currently are on the larger side. Not as large as uh, there was a story going around recently of, uh, of a cat that was 40 pounds or something oh, wow. that was adopted recently. But your kitties, you know, are, are large and they are Persian or? Well, um, Harley is a British long hair. He's 27 pounds. He's a very, very big boy. And his story was, was interesting. I went to pick up Roy and Claire, my sweet Roy boys right here, and his sister um, in Washington State. I don't like the idea of, of going and putting the cats in the hold. If I could go to United Airlines and say, put me in the hold, but give them my seat, I would be fine. But they won't do that legally. So I used flyer miles I got with my credit card for free. I flew three. I flew free. And so did the person from whom I got Claire and Roy, because it was one cat per person. I flew back with Roy. She flew back with Claire. But when I overnighted at her place, there was a beautiful cream-colored white cat who was in my arms kissing me all night long. 
And I said, I want him too. And she said, you can't have Harley. He's my soul. Turned out that this big cat was an 11-pound kitten. And I thought, an 11-pound kitten? Wow, <laughs> that's a big boy. So I worked on Shelley, and Shelley flew out to Newark with Harley. But Harley had a very sad story. Harley was supposed to be a stud cat. He was supposed to be a stud cat. But the person who had wanted Harley and took Harley for those purposes, Harley did not like to be combed. He did, And he still doesn't. But I, we have an understanding. When his eyes get big, I, I calm him down. I pet him and I say, it's okay, sweetie. It's okay. No teeth. I don't want to see your teeth. No teeth. And I'll comb him and love him up. And he's such a good boy. But the person who had him shaved him and neutered him and brought him back to Shelley, which is horrible, just horrible. So I got Harley. I got this beautiful, beautiful, loving cat, loving, loving cat. And he likes nothing better than to groom tiny Ruthie, who's only six pounds. And they, all four of them get along. And they're my family. I, I, could never, I could never imagine life without them. I work for them. I live for them. When I'm driving home, I sing their theme songs in my head. My sweet Roy. Mm, my Roy. My, my, my Roy. And when you do have quite a quite a commute, you I believe you commute a couple of hours each way to to your work. So your your cats need quality time when you're there home with them. And you had mentioned in our conversation before we hit the recording, you know that you get up extra early so you can have special time with your cats. And there's this incredible bond that that we all have with our pets, especially with our cats. And, you know, from your perspective is why is it so important that as a society, here you are, you're a professor of anthropology, correct? Yeah. You know, as a society, as a culture, why is it so important that we have cats, pets be really firmly accepted as a critical unit of our families? Why is that so incredibly important to you? Words of Temple Grandin, pets make us human access that special pop flame in our hearts to life that realize love unconditional love um i have a, a, a fancy for the go cat series they're on a wand and an eight for one a wand one with a b one bass one with a little prepare and each cat loves a particular and i too love to see of them play and have a good and i join them in that play also they make me alive they engage in spirit of life that would us be and possibly not even expressed and i feel that everyone deserves that i feel that everyone deserves the opportunity to have a pet to, to earn love pet. there's there's nothing better times you know when when my claire was in the stove and i yelled at her I yelled at her. It was dangerous. So it would be better. She thought there'd be scraps for her to lick up. But no. So you have to be very careful. They're just like children in some ways. But they they bring to me such joy in love and life. I can hardly wait to be with them. And people should have that opportunity too. To not to deny themselves the company of a pet, the love of a pet, the life with a pet. If they, they feel that they cannot take care of them if they're elderly or live alone, if they get the Save My Pet ID tag, as I have, the pendant, the bracelet, the keychain, they will know that if anything were to happen to them while they're recovering in the hospital or wherever else, their pets will receive the same loving care that they would otherwise have been providing if they had been able. Put a trusted contact on the back and you're good to go. The lady next door has the garage door to my home. I commute every day to Westchester Community College. Two hours, two hours, two and a half hours each way. Anything can happen. The Tappansee Bridge by any other name is still as dangerous. I think that there is a definite inverse correlation between people who enjoy amusement park rides and people who drive cars. In other words, the more you're on the road, the less you want to go into an amusement park rides. You're getting your thrill on the road. So you could call it that. Very true. Very, very true. So, you know, we were also having a little bit of a conversation about your experiences working with adoption programs and, and various organizations. And 
you know, really encountering challenges and potential sort of bias or challenges to access to adoption. We've talked a lot about access to care, which is so important that everybody needs to have access to affordable vet care for their cats, or we that's what we aspire to. But what about access to adoption? What are, what are your thoughts around that? Are there barriers to adoption that oh, yeah. exist out there? There sure are. Now that I'm not only, the, the silver hair is real. I didn't touch it up anywhere. There is no tube in my bathroom that says suddenly silver. I am silver. So I see now the world from many different perspectives. And I see people who are 40 plus, 50 plus and older who seek to adopt pets and they're turned away. They're turned away because they live alone or because they're elderly. People feel that they won't live long enough to enjoy the company of a pet. But what about a senior pet for a senior person? What could be a better bond than that? I have actually seen an elderly man he was probably in his 80s, and he was going to adopt at one of the shelters I help out in. He was about maybe 85, and he was with his daughter. And he was looking longingly, longingly at a cat whom he was petting through the cage. And his daughter said, Now, Dad, don't you realize you're 85 years old? What would happen to that cat if you were to take him home? Now, isn't that selfish of you? This man was crying. How dare this happen? How dare this happen? This poor man can't enjoy his life with a pet. And you know, you know that pets with the mutual bond in encourage the production of oxytocin, the bonding hormone. They lower blood pressure. But more than that, you save a life when you adopt. You save a life. And even in a no-kill shelter, you free up the cage for someone else. But the love, love is never wrong. Love is never wrong. Yeah, I can tell by looking, just looking at you. And unfortunately, we don't have the video with the uh, with the podcast, but you're very, very passionate about really ensuring that we all have the ability to to have pets in our life. And is there something that you think as a as an organization, like if you were on the board of directors of a nonprofit, how would you address this? And I can even talk about the flip side, which is I've known many organizations that won't adopt out to families with young children also. And, you know, because they, you know, the, the kids will terrorize the, the cats and, you know, all the visions of pulling cattails and all that kind of stuff too, which I grew up or I grew up, I had children, young children with, you know, upwards of 10 cats in the house at any given time with my, with I my love kids. It. I love it. And, and many of them, most of them were either over the age of 10 or semi-feral. Um, as I say, I sort of specialized and many of us specialize in adopting the strange, odd, old, and dysfunctional. But then again, we are all kind of strange, odd, old, and dysfunctional. I was just going to say, some of my students are feral. I went to sleep going to think about that. Some of my students are feral. In fact, as I was closing my eyes, I, I imagined some of them with the trap neuter release cut in the ear. <laughs> Went to sleep thinking about that. <laughs> well, you'll have to give them their space too. Um, one of the one of the places I, co I I contribute to is Allied Cat Allies. You know the these are cats that want to be outside. Mm -hmm. Trap, neuter, release. That's how they wish to live their lives. Some cats are indoor, outdoor. Mine are exclusively indoor. But you educate. You educate. You educate. This is a little life, a little life that has contracted with you to stay with you for their whole life. You have other things outside, but they only have you. When you come home, you owe them a life that you've taken from them. My home is a feline Disneyland. I have a bridge built into the wall. I've got cat perches. And in fact, I'm even thinking about getting another bridge to span the length of the ceiling so that they can go and play in it. People come in and they look at this place and they think I'm crazy. No. Okay, she's a crazy cat lady. Why not? But why not? We all love each other. We all love each other. And that's why. That's what it's about. And mm -hmm. part, of, part of love is education. Not writing a child off because the child is too young. I had to wait till I was seven before I first got my cat. Seven. Seven lonely years. Three years before me having met Tom, the old Tom, and getting my own cat. I couldn't believe how lucky I was to have her. Parents were afraid she might claw me. Oh, no. The only time I saw her claws was when she was making biscuits on me. She lived till 25. Oh, fantastic. Wonderful. 
we, we lived on a lake and she was able to fish and hunt. Of course, those days are gone because it's no longer safe with all the, the diseases that are out now and the pesticides. Back then it was. But the reality is education. Education for older people, education for younger people. All that needs to happen is compromise. Love definitively is compromise. Do you need expert help taming feral kittens for adoption? Watch the Taming Feral Kittens and Cats full-length workshop video now available for free on the Urban Cat League YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com and search Urban Cat League to see all of their videos to benefit community cats. Do you want to make things easier on yourself and the others in your organization? Our friends at Dubert have teamed up with the Dallas Pets Alive and Spay Neuter Network teams, and together they have created the Companion Case Management Module. It allows you to be more proactive with all your organization's needs, create cases for your clients, and organize them by type. Whether it is a rehoming situation, a pet parent needing food or medical assistance, or simply spay and neuter inquiries, CCM can help you manage all of them right from the Dubert system. Plus, a huge bonus, it allows you to connect with those clients right from the case so there is no need to open up new windows for emails or pull out your phone for text messages. Check it out and learn more at www.dubert.com to get started today. Ever wanted to quickly connect, collaborate, or problem solve with others in the animal welfare field who are, you know, real people? Look no further than Maddie's Pet Forum. Maddie's Pet Forum brings people of animal welfare together with the common goal to keep more people and pets together. We share ideas, expertise, offer each other support, resources, and more. Visit forum.maddiespetforum.org slash cats. Maddie's Pet Forum. Come for an answer. Stay for the community. There was a radio talk show host, Dave Ramsey, I used to listen to when I was driving home, teaching from night classes. And he used to say, when you get married, you learn to speak French. You say, we, oui, we, oui, instead of me, me. And the reality is when you invite a non-human animal, a cat into your life, you now also say, we, oui, we. Oui. It's not about me anymore. It's them. The joke is before I even put on my beloved coffee, they have their food out with their enzymes mixed into it. They have it first. That's a, ever that's really beautiful, actually. I, I hate to interrupt you, but taking that concept that you're just talking about, you know, from from your own uh, community in your home, there's a lot of conflict outside of the home with, with feral cat colonies or community cat colonies between yeah. wildlife, between neighbors that don't want the cats coming into their backyard. They're, and there's this like partnership that has to be created in order to perf to find that balance that's necessary. And, you know, being the the educator, the professor that you are and understanding our our systems that are out there, that we have this fine balance and finding that yes. balance is really the key. Absolutely. In fact, when I teach anthropology and I talk about the agricultural revolution, it's not by accident that cats were first domesticated in the Middle East. And people are just kind of shocked. And I say, first of all, when you plant grain, you're not going to be eating everything that's on the stalk immediately. You're going to store it just as you would money in the bank. And guess what? Guess who also likes grain? Rats. And rats can gnaw through basketry, but they cannot gnaw through pottery. So one of the things you see when you come onto an archaeological site is once you see pottery, you know you have storage, you know you have sedentism. But how much better it is to team up with an arsenal of cats? Because cats like the rodents. In fact, I saw a very cute birthday card I used several times where a cat is having a lecture and he's he's got dozens of cats in the room and he says, well, folks, he's got one of those uh, prognosticator charts as if he were an economist. And he says, guess what? It looks like we're due for another plague of rats. And everybody's applauding, yay, yay, because that's yeah. their nature. And there's a balance. There is a, a balance there, too. So you know, we, I get a lot of conversation. We were just talking about how your cats were indoor cats and, and that you have created an environment that is um, enriching to them. And I was thinking, well, when my kids were little, I had, you know, children's toys all over the place. 
as well as cat trees all over the place because I wanted places for my cats to go that my kids couldn't get at. So I had enrichment for cats at one level, enrichment for kids at another level. And but then you're also talking about the different roles that cats play within our society. So we have, you know, the working cat role. We have an indoor outdoor, maybe we call it a barn cat, even though that's also considered working cat. But, you, you know, if you get your barn cats in at night, I've seen lots of barns that I'd be happy living in, too, you know, at very you fancy, too. fancy barns with like animal and- planet TV on and that kind of thing. <laughs> and then and then we have the, uh, the indoor house cat, all three categories, those cats all need similar types of stimulation, just in in different ways, right? I also substitute teach. And it it moved me to tears to see how each room was delicious or was slated to be delicious for young children. There were books in one corner and games in another. And I thought how wonderful for the, the young mind. I was enriched. I was blessed. When I was growing up, my, my mother used to take me out of school and take me to museums like the Guggenheim or the Metropolitan or the Museum of Natural History. And my dad used to, used to also invent archaeological digs for me. My dad studied with Franz Boas at Columbia University. He also studied with B.F. Skinner, too, so watch out. <laughs> but he used, to, he used to create digs for me. And at the end of the dig, there would be a sack of a uh, of gold foil chocolate covered coins or there would be some bones to find and he would have little clues for me to look and i was learning to be an archaeologist as a young child just with that stimulation and how both my parents would put books on my bed for me to read and sometimes i would be so sad that the book had ended that i would cry and the next day another book would appear and a little note in the cover would say if you like that book you'll like this one even better and what a wonderful way to grow up. What a wonderful way to grow up without a television. We didn't need that. We, we had the outdoors. We bonded with nature. We didn't have candy or cake. We had we had nature's candy. We had we had peas. How tasty a pea is a fresh pea. And and that kind of, of love and bonding with nature. And bonding with non human animals is an integral part of that. Sharing with cats also fosters sharing with the environment, with other humans, and with everyone and everything within our ecosystem. That's all a vital component of what it is to be a live, sentient creature. So, you know, over the years, you've you've obviously, you've had cats for many years. I assume you've learned more about how to improve your internal environment, providing that kind of excitement, stimulation for your cats that your parents provided for you over those years. Oh, so yeah. Th- things have changed and continue to change. You just talked about putting a, a ramp up in the house, you know, another ramp uh, for them to to go up, you know, across and, and, and that kind of thing. But then I'm going to circle back here to the save my pet ID tag. That's another layer of, of concern, of protection. As, oh, yeah. your, as your parents would worry, what if something happened to us? We were on the t- Tappan Zee Bridge. Yeah. And, you know, Janice was at home. What would happen if, if something, you know, terrible happened to us? Now you've, in the last five years or so, you've thought about this Save My Pet ID tag. So, you know, tell me how this all got started and, you know, why are you so passionate about it? Well, when I lived in Alaska, um, I lived alone. I lived with a cat who got to be 21 years old, but she was hypertensive she was diabetic. She was on metformin, insulin, and Norvask. And I was concerned because I was a full-time graduate student and I was also teaching on campus. It was a very rare but wonderful fortuitous combination. But my great concern would be if I didn't come home, if something happened to me, nobody would ever knew that I had a cat. And so I put little notes inside my backpack and in my day runner with the information from my veterinarian. If I should be found unresponsive. My cat is here. She needs these medications. But it also, with human children, we have godparents. That's the whole idea of what a godparent is. If something happens to the human parents, the godparent steps in. So my, in effect, my godparent is the lady who lives across the street. She has the garage door opener for my home. So now, if anything were to happen to me, the trusted contact, that's my next door neighbor, my neighbor across the street, 
is on the back of the Save My Pet ID tag. She'll be called, texted, and she'll come over and take care of my pets. It's extremely important, that level of security. I also have a YouTube channel. And in that YouTube channel, there is an explainer video. Because many people, this is a new concept. Many people will think that the tag is for the, the, the pet. No, it's for the pet parent. Because no matter how much care and love you give to your pets, if you're not there to provide the care and the love, just imagine how abandoned and hurt they would feel if you never came home. They wouldn't know. So how lovely it is to have a trusted friend come over, become acquainted with your pet, just as a godmother or godfather would be for a human child. Then the bond and the care is, con is continuous. So if you don't come home, if you're in the hospital, you know, as you're recovering, you know in your bones that your pets are being cared for. Also, in the YouTube channel, I have a section called Accidents Happen. And most people don't know that. They don't appreciate those things can happen. A car crash can happen. Whenever I'm driving home in the rain, and I hope I don't bring this to myself via law of attraction, I keep thinking these, these trees are going to fall on my car, and that's the end. But I've got my Save My Pet ID tag. Stainless steel. It's going to last, even if I don't. God forbid. But anything can happen. I kickbox every day. Something can happen there. I could fall. Anything can happen to anyone of any age. Accidents are no respect of, of age, and they're called accidents, or they'd be called on purposes, right? So it's a level of security to know that if anything happens to you, the pet parent, that they will be cared for. And, and it's also another opportunity to bond with another human. You don't have to be insular. No one should be. So you invite your pet parents, you, you invite your caregivers over periodically to get your cats used to them, your dogs, your guinea pigs, your iguana, your horses. Get them all involved and unite the families together. And so, oh, here's Uncle Sam, here's Uncle, Uncle Sam, here's... Here's Aunt Sarah, and your cats know them. Your dogs know them. Everyone knows them. And now it becomes a family. And that's the most important thing, the union of souls, the union of spirits in the common bond of love. So, Janice, if folks are interested in finding out more about the Save My Pet ID tag and more about the work that you've been doing, how would they do that? Well, we have a website. It's all lowercase, all one word together, save S-A-V-E, my, M-Y, pet, P-E-T-I-D, tag, T-A-G, dot com. That'll take you right to my website, savemypetidtag.com. And is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? No, other than it's been a, 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 an absolute privilege and a delight to see you again, Stacy, and to be with you. I so admire all the work you do. And if, if I could possibly make it I would love to table for you, by the way. You once had mentioned the possibility of tabling for you. Let mm. me know. Let me know. Wonderful. Excellent. Well, Janice, thank you so much for your support, your sponsorship of the Online Kitten Conference. Uh, thank you for all that you're doing for Save My Pet ID Tag, for helping cats, helping families. So thank you so much for being a guest on the show, and I hope we'll have you on again in the future. Thank you for having Count on it. Count on it. Thank you again. That's it for this week. Please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. We love to hear what you think, and a five-star review really helps others find the show. You can also join the conversation with listeners, cat caretakers, and me on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to hit follow or subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single show. Thanks for listening, and thank you for everything that you do to help create a safe and healthy world for cats. Wow.